It's a new day. It's a new box. And this must be power amp month because I am like buying power amps like there's no tomorrow. Um, but I promise this is going to be an interesting one for various reasons. So let's open this guy up. Okay, so what do we have? You already might see it. So we have a SIN 5050. SIN 5050, 50 watts per channel. Synergy, goodness. Made to be a companion of these guys right here, SIN 2s. Um, but there's two power amps that run around out there, similar design, similar, and, well, different, similar design, I'll say it that way. I actually have both now getting this one. So SIN 5050, 606s, 50 watts. Behind me is a Fryet LX2, also 606s, 50 watts. So this is gonna be a per perfect opportunity to show you both and kind of highlight the differences between the two. Because there's a lot of talk and a lot of chatter of asking, all right, who's got both? What's the difference between the two? Do they sound the same? What are the feature differences? And uh, I hope to give you that info. All right, so I've got both, uh, both units out of the rack, right on top of each other. So I'll go through the features, front panel, back panel, and uh, talk a little bit about them, open them up, and then we'll do a playthrough. So uh, looking at the top, LX2's got single volume. Um, and we talked about, you know, single volume in the last power amp comparison. You know, Marshall 2020 versus the Mesa 2020. Um, one good topic of discussion that came out of that is uh, having one master volume guarantees that channels A and B are at the same volume. Uh, whereas if you have two independent volumes, you might be tweaking that back and forth and never finding true matching volume. So, you know, maybe there's a plus side to that. Obviously, it's in 50-50. It's got channel A, channel B. So you have that going for you. Um, other big difference between these two power amps, if you look at uh, LX2, you've got a button for your presence and your, for your depth. Whereas, you know, it's in 50-50, you've got some adjustments um, around the front panel. So reading the manual for the LX2, uh, this power amp, without these two buttons engaged, is really made to be very flat response and used with uh, you know your, your modelers, you know your Axe FX or your Kempers or you know something along those lines. Um, so without these engaged, flat response. With them engaged, you get your presence and your depth that you would be doing. Unfortunately, it's not in a pot format like you have on the front of the SIN 5050. On the very top, you've actually got uh, holes in the chassis that you can get to trim pots that you can do this. So, you know, from my point of view, that's a little bit tricky. Um, obviously, I run with a bunch of power amps and a bunch of preamps. So if I'm always using a different preamp and I switch and I want to do an adjustment, I've got to actually go and get to the top of this guy and make that presence or depth adjustment on the top. If he's in the rack, tough to do. Um, by contrast, Synergy 5050, I got the knobs right here so I can easily, easily tweak them. So, you know, the way that I would look at it, from what I do with a ton of different preamps, and I know this is, you know, this is not normal. I'm, a, you know, I'm crazy. I would prefer to have the, the you know, the adjustments in the front. Um, but if you're a guy that tours and you've got a set set up and all you want to do is be able to kick it in and kick it out, uh, depending on, you know, modeler or some type of traditional tube preamp, um, LX2 might be a good deal for you because you just basically um, hit it and make your changes and everything's set. So going a little farther to the other side is pretty pretty simple, standard. Uh, you got your fuses for each channel. You've got your um, standby and on for each channel. And then you master power for, for each channel. Um, you know, Fryant's got a nice big green lit um, on off switch. Shinerji's got a little black one with a little LED in the corner there. Not huge difference, but you know, something. And then obviously the aesthetic. You've got, you know, brushed aluminum uh, front. You've got just a 
you know, matte black, black, black front. So let me spin these around. I'm going to show you the back of these two units. So you got your power. You've got another fuse right here. Um, there's your tube complements here, the four 6L6s in each one. Over here you got your stereo or mono switch. So whether you're using this as a stereo power amp, two sides, mono. Um, for each one of your channels, you've got your ohm switch, whether it's eight, uh, sorry, four, eight, 16. Same thing with the Shin 5050. Um, and you have your speaker outputs uh, for channels A and B, a two for each channel. And there's a use first that tells you which one to use first. Beyond that, then we get into some, some differences. So actually, let me hit the very far part of it. Uh, you got your inputs for channel one, or channel A and channel B, channel A and channel B for your SYN 5050. And then in between these two is where the, the differences happen. So you notice the SYN 5050 has a big, big, um, big space right here. And then, you know, your LX2's got three different, um, three different jacks that the 5050 doesn't have. So, what those are, are line outputs. So, LX2's got a line out for A and line out for B. So you can basically take that, run that to your, your um, audio interface, you could run that into a DI, you could run into somewhere else, and uh, have that capability. SYN 5050 doesn't have that, but keep in mind, 5050 was made to be a companion to the SYN 2's up here. And the SYN 2 has a line output. So if you pair those two together, you got that functionality anyway. So you know, it depends on your setup. Think about how you're gonna use the, the power amp and, and if you're gonna use a line out, where would you like the line out to come from? From the SYN, you know, SYN 2? Or would that be from um, your power amp? You know, if I was running multiple preamps and switching between them, probably want my line out to come out of the power amp. If I'm using one SYN 2 and that was it, that's fine for me too. So, you know, that's a, that's a good feature to think about, how you use your rig and how you're gonna use the, the line out if you're gonna do that. And the last jack, far here, um, that one is to turn on the depth and the presence mode uh, from a foot pedal. So, instead of running back to your rack and hitting the buttons, you got a foot pedal on the ground, hit the foot pedal, and then your depth and your presence settings are gonna kick in. Uh, but from a nutshell, that's the front and back panel. Um, Next, we're gonna take a look at the inside of the units. Okay, so as you can see, I had to let uh, this guy out of the box for a bit. Uh, it's a rare time. Um, when I bought this, it wasn't nearly worth what it is now. And that's one of the reasons why I barely ever play it now. Um, but I figured you guys would enjoy this. This is a 2013 uh, Gibson ES335 dot Chris Cornell signature model. They reissued the green. Um, they did not reissue the black. This is the black, uh, matte black finish. Uh, Lothertrons, H Lothertrons, um, my favorite 335, hands down. I mean, this, this is an awesome, awesome guitar. Um, but I'll play this through another equally rare piece of gear. Uh, you don't get to hear a lot of it, so I'm gonna play it this time. Up here, on the very top, that guy up there, Langner, DCP-1. So. I'm going to go through um, the lead channel first and play through each one of these power amps. Uh, I'm going to change the settings on the depth of the presence so you hear what that sounds like. And um, in the room, I can tell you, it does sound different. The two, the two definitely sound different. I don't know if it's the way the LX2 is set up uh, with the trim pots. I actually have not touched these since I bought them. So who knows? Um, also, I have a dimly lit depth LED. I don't know if that's going to mean anything. I can hear it when I click it in, so I, I guess it's just cosmetic. <laughs> this is what happens when you buy used gear. But 
let's see what uh, what they sound like. Let me um, start off with LX2. And we're going to go use uh, none of the uh, the depth or the, the presence, just straight out. And a very noisy studio that I have. That last clip was basically LX2 flat, no switches engaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch on the presence and the depth, play the same riff again. So let's try the same thing with the Sin 2. So switch that guy over. And now we've got Sin 2, and I've got the depth and the presence at noon. So what I'm going to assume is flat. Because um, honestly, if you don't turn them to noon, it sounds kind of muddy. So here we go. an idea of the the range on the presence and the, the depth i'll just chug like an open d chord this is drop d and hit the knobs and show you what that sounds like and the difference it makes in the in the tone So there's the two um, two extremes. I went from minimum all the way to maximum on the treble first, or sorry, treble the presence first, and then I went minimum and maximum on the depth side. Um, so yeah, uh, here I'll just A B and switch back and forth and do some weird things, and you get an idea a little bit more of the differences between these two.
Now we're in the clean channel of the Langner. Um, it's a pretty, pretty good clean. I'm gonna get off the bridge pickup on this guy and just go both of them. Um, because the one thing that the clean channel of the Langner is, is it's pretty clean and it's pretty high, high treble. So let's go hear what that sounds like through each one of these two uh, power amps. Um, let's do it first with the, the presence and the depth not engaged on the LX2, and then we'll hear that, you know, go from there. presence on. All right, with the depth on. All right, now for the Sintu. Both at noon. Okay. Let's turn that depth down and see what happens. Turn that depth, actually turn that triple up, just get a little bit brighter. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. Doesn't have that sparkle that the LX2 does. So that's what I think. All right, so let me crank the presence, turn the depth up a little bit, see what we can get. There. Um, we're still cranked on the presence and we're about I don't know, 11 o'clock-ish on the depth. Turn that presence down a little bit. Let's go about 3 o'clock here. Yeah. They do definitely sound different. Um, I actually expect them to be really close, honestly. Um, but actually look, taking a peek inside and looking at some of the, the features, yeah, they're uh, different animals, for sure. Um, I'm really torn, actually. I like the sound of the LX2, I really do. Um, I actually think it's clearer than the Sin 5050 for what it does. Um, Although the feature set doesn't quite fit for what I do, I, I really would like to have presence in, uh, in depth on the front panel, and I'd love to have um, independent independent volume knobs. Um, but other than that, it's it's a really cool print or a really cool power app. Uh, I like them both. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of the two. Uh, hopefully, you guys um, can hear the differences between the two. Hopefully, I captured that well. And um, if you enjoy what I'm doing, like and subscribe, uh, and leave a comment. Till next time. Thanks for watching. Rua.